Yeah, I thought I'd make a video showing what I've done to my uh, Electrolux uh, Ergo Rapido vacuum with a bad battery. Um, actually replaced it. All the screws are already out of it. With a uh, 3S LiPo pack of like the radio controlled hobby type. And what that is replacing is actually 10 AA batteries that came out. Uh, one of them tried actually reverse polarity and melted the casing. <clears throat> and it had a configuration of four AA's in the handle uh, and six surrounding the motor. Two here, two here, two on the other side, all in series. Um, and I'd originally replaced them with a Sanyo Interloops uh, that worked well for yeah, about a little bit less than a year. Uh, the problem with the Interloops, they, they ran great, had an awesome run time, but the charging circuit that's built in is actually pretty uh, crude. It's just a resistive type charger, and uh, trickle charging Interloops doesn't, uh, doesn't do well for them, and I actually had one of the cells uh, it just died it in reverse polarity like the original ones but so uh, I'm looking for a better solution or at least a less expensive and time consuming solution I have uh, about just a 3S hobby lipo it's a 1300 milliamp hour which is uh, the same marked capacity as the original Electrolux uh, that if you can read it, but it's their 1300 milliamp hour uh, AA batteries. And I've ripped out all the circuitry that was uh, connecting those batteries in series, pulled all the batteries out. This was originally in place of, uh, in place with the series uh, AA pack. This is a fusible link, uh, probably for you know, it's a, got a thermal sensor. All that's gone now. Uh, I don't know if that was part of the charging circuit or if it was just to, you know, shut down the vacuum if there was a fire or anything in it. But uh, just a disclaimer, these are dangerous. You can't use the built-in uh, charging circuit anymore. You have to come up with a solution to charge them uh, that actually balances between the three cells. Uh, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, you probably shouldn't shouldn't tackle this. But I'll try to get you in closer here. Uh, left the uh, this circuit board behind the motor. There's two contacts. Uh, it's red and black, of course, for positive and negative. Just uh, clip those wires at the battery, soldered on a Dean's connector, same type as what you'd use in the radio control hobby. And that's uh, what's on this pack too. That is the balance port. It's what I use for uh, charging this. Now I did have to, for the size battery I have, I did have to actually uh, take a Dremel and uh, grind out some uh, ridges that were originally in place I think to uh, hold the, bat uh, the AA batteries in place. Also, I don't know if you can really see where I have, I've also uh, cut out some of the ridges in the handle, the top handle. Also for the balance port connector, I've cut a notch here where this, uh, where the actual on off switch rests so that I can uh, hard to do this with one hand. The balance connector actually sticks out right behind where the button is when it's all assembled. And, uh, it's hard to do with one hand, but it uh, seems to work. Uh, the voltage will be a little bit lower for, uh, well this one fully charged, uh, it's a little bit over 12 volts uh, when all the cells are 4.2, but nominally it's 11.1 .1 volts. Uh, doesn't seem to make it run too much slower, but it, it does make a little bit of a difference. Runtime is uh, 
similar to when it was new. Not quite as much runtime probably as with the Eneloops, but the nice thing about it is uh, it appears to have a flatter curve. It doesn't, like with the Eneloops, it would start off uh, running really, you know, high RPM and then it would slowly kind of, and then by the end it was running really slow. This one's flat curve. Once it starts uh, lowering the RPM, that's when you know your battery is uh, dying. And also I have a, uh, I have something I'll show you how I can actually tell when I'm getting low on voltage so as to not over discharge the battery and ruin it. Let's see if I can get this all back together again. And it seems to fit pretty well on the handle. I could have probably gotten one that's a little bit higher capacity and still fit it in there, but I didn't really uh, know what would fit. So, let me put it back together. I said it runs, runs as well as it did when it was new. Now, uh, <clears throat> the charger that I've got for it, mystery. Uh, We'll charge a 2S or 3S through the balance port. Uh, only charges at 800 milliamp hours, so uh, it's a little bit over half uh, half C charging uh, for a 1300 milliamp hour battery. It takes about you know a little under two hours to charge fully. And I just uh, plug that into the balancing port, and of course. Plug my balance charger into the 12 volt adapter. Yeah. Means it's charging. Green light flashing. Um, wouldn't leave it charging unattended. Uh, unhook it from the charger as soon as it goes solid green. You can get these from Deal Extreme, about $8. And uh, how I make sure that I don't over discharge. Set this down. Got one of these. Bought off eBay. It's just a 3S LiPo alarm. It's got uh, three green LEDs, three red LEDs. It tells you when your uh, battery is getting low, below. Uh, I think the cutoff is like 3.2 volts per cell before it will actually turn red. Yeah, hold this. Uh, it's got a piezo. It sounds an audible alarm. It drives my dog nuts. But there, as you can see, three green lights. Uh, if you see any of them turn red, time to stop using it. Let it cool down, charge it up. <laughs> but it. Uh, all in all, it seems to work fine. It runs the brush roller on the uh, when it's on the the actual stick. Uh, I don't use the built-in charger anymore. And another thing that I've done just as a precautionary measure on the uh, standard base, I have removed there and there the uh, charging terminal so that uh, basically the charger can't be accidentally plugged in and uh, cause a lipo fire. And, uh, you know, like I said, this is uh, dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't, you know, if you don't know what uh, lipos are capable of, you can look up a uh, lipo explosion on YouTube and uh, you'll see they're not anything to uh, mess with. You've got to be very careful how you charge them and how you, uh, you know, you, you've got to really watch for them because they will, uh, if they're over discharged and charged again or charged with an improper, you know, like a nickel metal hydride charger, they will puff up, they will explode, and uh, you don't want to be around when that happens. But with that being said, I don't have anything back 
so far it seems to work incredibly well. It's kind of ugly having, you know, having my blinky sticking out there, but but it really, you know, it's, like I said, the brush roller still still works. Kind of right there. So that's an option if you don't want to spend twenty dollars on some double A's and have to solder on it for two hours. This probably could be done in less than an hour. And that's that's all. Thanks for watching.